Welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. It's been a few days since my last video. Been a pretty uh, hectic work week at work with Monday and Tuesday, trying to pull a radial engine off a of Beechcraft Beach 18. But I'm back at it, trying to get some of this stuff done. Wednesday I had to have surgery on a cyst on my tailbone, but we got that taken care of. Doc's got me on some pain meds, so it's been a it's been a fun week. But through the week, I've gotten some panels started out. I actually got about 25 panels made up, cut out, detailed, and then they're all put back on the fuselage. You can also see the the nose cone and the, the canopy plugs are looking pretty ugly right now. I've got some, some glazing compound filling in some, pop, some pinholes and some low spots here and there. I've actually got to get back and get those sanded off, throw another clear primer on there and see what we can't do, get them looking a little bit better again. But we'll just start out from the top here. Working at the top of the half side of the, the the radome area, see a couple panels. We got two little strips here. These are actually the the hinge areas on the the full scale full scale airplane. The panel right here is actually it holds a yaw string on the real thing, and I probably have a yaw string on the models as well since it's a fairly simple thing. Just kind of drill a hole at the edge of the panel, tie a knot on the string, with a little glob of silicone to hold it in place, and there's your yaw string. Working down here on the right side, we'll come back down. We've got three more panels, two here and here. They're kind of hard to see since they blend in. Then we've also got the the formation light strips frames in there as well. Come back, we've got a pedo tube doublers there as well as an angle of attack and temperature probe doublers. We'll actually get those made up later on after we get the... We might do it on when we're kind of slow with other things, waiting on stuff to dry, but we'll get those made up and... These will actually already be in the in the molds and molded into the airframe. So if the the buyers decide to get that detail package, all it'll be a matter is just taking the parts and finding the center of these and gluing them in place and they'll already have all that stuff figured out. There won't be any measuring or anything. It's already there. So it'll make life a little bit easier. Come back through, We've got the 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 inlet splitter, it's completely done. As well, we've got that one that one uh, transition panel there it's completely done you can see it's got a nice little curve to it that's all done with one panel it came out really nice I'm pleased with how it came out and you can also see the the bottom of it where it comes in with the, the sponson area come back through we've got the, the nav light details again kind of run it to the top here we've got the I believe it's a the environmental control system uh, heat vents where they come out I believe this is actually so it's either Inkana or titanium in the full scale. This is just to kind of mold the area into the fuselage. I'll probably offer a G10 detail package as well. That'll be uh, machine G10 sheets to make this look a bit, a bit more, more, uh, more accurate to where the, if they decide to buy that package, you just cut these grills out and you'll just glue some G10 points in there that'll be the right size and have the correct angle and everything on for them. Top of the spawn here, you've got another little doubler for an antenna base. That'll also be in the same detail package as all the t the pedo probes and everything. Working our way back, we've got another doubler here, and you see the little the dome thing as a GPS antenna. That was pretty much standard on all Tomcats after about the year 2000. So I decided to just go ahead and mold that in with all of the with everything else. Working our way back, you see another little antenna base doubler mount. We got some more access panels here on both sides. Come back, you can see the little piece of balsa I knocked off. We've got the overwing fairing dub stiffeners. I've oh, got to get those shaped a little bit better. Uh, I think I'm going to make new ones because they just they don't fit that great up against it just because of the complex shape. But I'll either make new ones or I'll just extend the G10 sheet to where it fits the, the contour of the overwing fairing really nice. But those are that. Working our way back, you see that two more access panels we've got some doublers here to kind of help hold these access panels on the full scale I have no idea why they're there maybe somebody out there in YouTube land who knows something about F-14s can let us know what the purpose of those were working way back get two more access panels and then even even further further back we've got the two here and then another one there but the fuselage is pretty much 90 I'm gonna say 95 percent done all that's left is the the Two panels on each side here, panel here, there's another one on the bottom side where the fuel dump tube actually comes out for the fuel system. 
I think I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and mold that in with everything else. I'll make the panel with a little bit of a hump on the top and the bottom, put that in place, and it'll just all be molded together. That way it's just one less thing to have to do later on. And I got to start get started with the plugs for the, the exhaust nozzles here pretty soon. I think I've decided I'm just going to use some uh, green floral foam from from Michael's for uh, hobbies and crafts or something. And then I'll just throw them on a, a lathe, shape them, then fiberglass it. Then take some more of this litho plate, cut the each feather of the turkey nozzle to the right size, and attach it and just do it out of that. I'm also going to see of getting maybe Tam Jets or somebody like that to actually do a, a stainless steel exhaust nozzles for it. Maybe I can get those offered as a, a standard for the kit. So it's just one less thing to do. You can see I've got panel on each side here to do around the, the exhaust nozzle. The exhaust, you've actually got the exhaust nozzle here and then on the full scale this area is actually all carbon fiber on the top and a little bit of it on the bottom. I'm gonna, since the stab pivot is pretty much right here, this whole area from about here back all the way across the back of the fuselage will be laminated with carbon fiber in the actual usable parts. So all this will actually already have the carbon fiber look to it. It'll just be a matter of taping it off and it'll look just like the real thing with the carbon fiber. See here's the, the opening for the vertical tail. I decided to not litho plate this area. So it's kind of a recess for uh, for the vertical tail and it, it lines it up just perfect with the center line of the fuselage. So all they gotta do is when you get it ready, put your spar in and attach it and just high saw it or epoxy it in place on the, the finished thing. Uh, come around the back, we've also got another formation light frame. And I'll actually, this will, since they're accurate on both sides, the exhaust, the stabilizer pivot, you'll actually you'll just measure from the frame to get your, your neutral position for the for the stabs. So that should work out pretty pretty well. You can see the nice little gap there for the river wing fairing. If the, there it goes, now it's in focus. You can see. Just in there, this is the bolt here is actually the wing pivot point. This will all, of course, be carbon fiber and aluminum on the, the usable part. See, it's just a, the whole view of the airplane is pretty cool. I'm very pleased with it. I got word today that we, me and the wife may be moving a little bit, about 30 minutes down the road into a, a bigger house that we've decided to, to look at. So we may even, I might be getting a bigger, a bigger shop. So we're looking at... It's got a one car detached garage and then a, another 15 by 20 uh, shop beside the garage. So if all that works out, I'll have a lot of room and I'll be able to knock out probably three or four of these airplanes at once. Maybe even do a couple other things. Maybe we can talk uh, Bob and Butch into sending me a F-101 Voodoo or F-106 plug so I can do all the work for that and we can get some classic jets going out. But that's where I'm at. Hopefully I'll uh, be able to get started on these overwing fairing stiffeners get the the fuselage completely done get some more of this these plugs for the radome and the can and the actual canopy done knocked out this weekend i gotta drag the fuselage up to work i got a a buddy there at work who's actually used to be a, a crew chief on an f-14 that's dying to see this thing so if i can get that up there i can get this whole windscreen area primered and once i get that done i can pull a plug for the the clear parts of it get all this detailed up hopefully before we move and then once we get into the bigger bigger place I'll be able to start molding the fuselage and while I'm finishing the detailing on the wings and the spoilers and everything so pretty much we're on schedule now to start doing all the mold construction but I'm hoping the the first of April if we move it'll probably turn out to be the first of May but if we can do that done I might actually have a flying F-14 Tomcat by this time next year but that's where I'm at if anybody has any questions, please feel free to pop up, ask them, send me an email. So that's where we're at. Until next time, we will see you in the shop.